Hello and welcome to this week's Artist Gang Tuesday with Donna Downey Studios. My name is Nicole Watson and today I'm showing you how to make some layered leaf backgrounds with Donna's triple leaf stencil. Then we'll turn the backgrounds into some cards. Grab your supplies and join me! The first step is to use masking fluid with Donna's stencil to create some masked out leaves on watercolor paper. After this we're going to add two more layers of leaves so you just want to have a few leaves on this paper so that you can add some more as we build the layers. I used the stencil more as a guide and didn't get too close to the edges so that the masking fluid wouldn't seep underneath. Now that I'm done using the stencil, I'm just using my masking fluid to clean up the edges a bit and touch up any areas that needed a little bit more fluid. Now I'm adding my first layer of watercolor using mostly Daniel Smith watercolors here. I'm just kind of flooding the watercolor paper with a light green. There's really no uh, rhyme or reason to how I'm putting the watercolor on here, just putting it here and there so that it kind of gets a fun um, painterly look in a way. And um, then I splatter some paint once in a while also to add some texture. Here I'm doing the same thing except I'm using Jane Davenport's watercolors. Flooding the paper with um, a lighter green, uh, concentrating more of the color in the center of the leaves, and also adding some flicks of color here and there. And for the third paper, I'm doing the exact same thing, but using the Prima watercolors. I thought it was fun to see the difference in the three different um, greens that each of these different watercolors use, so I wanted to do each paper using a different brand of watercolors. After I looked back at the first watercolor sheet that I did with the Daniel Smith colors, I decided there wasn't enough contrast, so I added some darker green in the center of my leaves. Now I'm starting the second layer of leaves using masking fluid again through the stencil on top of the first layer of watercolor. The same process as before, using the stencil as a guide and then I go back and clean up any parts of my masking fluid that got a little funny or had some jagged edges. I did the same thing with all three sheets and now I'm going to start the second layer of watercolor. For this layer I'm using the same palettes that I used on each piece of watercolor paper but choosing a darker green or a different um, interesting shade of green and flooding just those new leaves with paint on the inside and on the outside and letting it kind of um, flood outside the leaves a little bit. Make sure that you get this layer on the outside of the leaves otherwise our new masking fluid won't show up as well and then I took the paint and did a little bit of darker highlights here and there inside those leaves and also did some spider paint to add some interest. doing the same process here, this time with the Jane Davenport watercolors and then in a little bit with the Prima watercolors, choosing a darker green, flooding those new leaves inside and out and adding some splatters here and there. 
So overall, this project is pretty simple and quick, except for the drawing time. You want to be sure to let each layer of masking fluid and watercolor completely dry before beginning the next. I found that this was the perfect way to have some creative time throughout my day. When I was waiting for each layer to dry, I did some less fun things like laundry and dishes. I'm finishing up my third sheet here with the Prima watercolors and then I let all three sheets completely dry before I began the next process which is removing the masking fluid. You can use your finger to remove the masking fluid however using one of these adhesive erasers makes the process so much easier and less tiring on your finger as you remove all of the masking fluid from the leaves. Once I removed the masking fluid from all three sheets of my watercolor paper, I wanted to cut it up for my card fronts. Now if you don't want to make cards, you could leave these in your art journal and um, use them for background. You'd want to spray it with some fixative first so that the watercolor didn't run. However, I wanted to make cards with these and because I wanted to be a little bit more strategic in my next placement of the leaves depending on how the card front looked, I wanted to cut this off into my card fronts so that I can place the next leaf in the perfect spot. Oh and by the way, don't throw away those scraps from the end of cutting off your card fronts. We're going to use them in a minute. So now I'm starting my third layer of leaves. Same process as the masking fluid except instead of the masking fluid I'm using watercolor. You can use one of the same greens, mix up a combination of the both, do a darker green, whatever you want. And then I placed the stencil on top of my card and used the leaf stencil as a guide again so that the watercolor wouldn't flood underneath. It did once in a while and I kind of just went with it. I cleaned up the leaf afterwards or kind of flooded it outside the leaf to look like it was supposed to be that way. Um, this is kind of just an intuitive process wherever you feel like you want the next leaf. And I did this for all of my card fronts with each watercolor palette. When I was finished adding the leaves to this set of card fronts and cleaning them up, I did splatter a little bit more paint on the top. This allowed some of those splatters to get in those white leaves and kind of make it a little bit more um, continuous throughout the card. And then I hopped on to my next set using the Prima colors and then the Jane Davenport colors. Same process, um, adding this darker leaf on top and then at the end splattering them all. So then I grabbed some green cardstock from my card bases. I did cut the fronts to fit the A5 size um, exactly perfect on the front with no border, but you could cut your watercolor fronts a little smaller and leave that border if you want. So then I cut and scored my card bases, adhered my watercolor leaves to the front, and on a couple I had to do some extra trimming where it hung off, but for the most part they fit exactly on the front. I stamped the back of my cards with my name and website, then I decided I needed to add some splatters to the envelopes. So I grabbed the envelopes and splattered a couple greens on the front, flipped them over and splattered the same greens on the back.
So here's where I'm going to use those scraps. I wanted to package these up into cute little bundles to give away. So I used my scraps to make little cards. First I folded them in half, then added a little bit of washi tape for some fun, and grabbed my baker's twine and tied the cards into little bundles for little gifts. Thank you so much for watching this week's Artist Gang Tuesday. If you haven't already, join the Donna Downey Community of Artists group on Facebook. I'll put the link below in the description box. In that group, you can share what you've been inspired to create. Or share your art on Instagram and tag Donna Downey Studios. And check below to see how you can win a set of these cards. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll be back next week.